let's start with systematic review I personally did a literature review uh, to see what are the functions of literature review and I found five main functions right uh, usually we review the literature to identify, summarize, and assess current theory and methods and to identify methodological problems and gaps. This is um, something that many of our PhD students also do. When you want to do a PhD, PhD you want to do a PhD, um, you need to show that your topic has contribution, right? So how, and this is the most important thing. You need to add something to the body of knowledge. So um, one of the common questions that usually examiners ask in uh, YWA, PhD YWA, is what is your contribution, right? Usually examiners who don't read the, <laughs> this, is, this is one of the, actually everyone asks, but anyway, this is one of the questions that you can ask if you, ha if you have not read the thesis. You just ask, what is your contribution, right? <laughs> and um, anyway, so uh, how to, uh, justify that you are contributing to the current body of knowledge you need to do a good literature review right if you do a good literature review then you can find the gaps research gaps what we don't know so to identify what we don't know first you need to know what we know so how we know what we know you need to do literature review right so this is one of the functions of literature review and many of us for empirical paper for PhD studies we need to do a good literature review and um, if you want to apply for a grant um, or um, yeah 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 many of the granting agencies many of the phone providers they ask you for a proposal and one of the most important parts of the proposal is what is the research gap what's your contribution and again you need to do a good literature review right or uh, decision makers right so for decision makers to make a good decision sound decision they need to know what we already have found so they need to review the literature right or practitioners they may read the literature to update themselves uh, about their field right so these are the main functions of literature review and i'm sure you already have heard about them uh, but you may think that okay why not writing a literature review paper hmm? you may think that okay uh, um, for example many of participants today are PhD students right so they may think okay I spent around two years of my life to do literature because literature review is usually the most time-consuming part of the PhD so you may say okay two three years I spent on literature review why not publishing just this literature review as a research paper um, yeah this can be a good idea uh, and um, yeah as I mentioned uh, oh okay well, yeah it's a very good actually idea uh, to publish when you are doing a PhD work you publish a literature review papers why first of all as I said you spend a lot of time on lit reviewing the literature you can publish it as a paper number two how you want to justify that your study is contributing your PhD has contributions significant contribution some of those smart students they publish a literature review paper and in the literature review paper they mention they highlight that these are the research gaps and then in their PhD they fill those gaps so in the YWA, when examiners say, sir, what is your contribution, right? Then you refer to that literature review paper. You would say there is a literature review paper. So, you know, and in, from the pos if you are a positivist, you should be independent from the researcher. Right? So you don't say this is my paper. So in the paper published in 2020, so this has been identified as one of the research gaps and my PhD work is addressing that gap, right? It's a response to the call by this research, right? So you can publish a literature review to highlight your research gaps. This is an excellent idea, right? So easy to justify your PhD work. Or sometimes I personally do a systematic review. Uh, Malan, I'm talking to you. Uh, my PhD student is here, Malan. 
So Malan, I, this is the idea that I gave to you. So sometimes when I want to start research in a new area, first I do a literature review and identify the gaps. Sometimes I publish it as a paper. Then I address those gaps that I identified and I already published them, highlighted them in my literature review paper as empirical papers. Oh, empirical papers, right? <laughs> And if you publish a literature review, you will be famous, right? You will be famous because this shows that you have a very good understanding of your field, right? Usually people who write literature review papers, they receive a lot of citations. So those people who are working in the field, when they write a paper, usually they refer to your work. So you get a lot of citations and you will be well known, right? One of my papers, uh, a very well-known professor in the field he just wrote one paper just wrote one paper as a response to our paper to our review paper right so this is I mean excellent it's very good right so he is like a celebrity in his field yeah so I don't name I don't mention the name you can Google and find out and he wrote just one paper and the title is in response to our review papers hmm? so you get a lot of uh, attention I mean if you write a re literature review paper okay so it's very good so why not writing a literature review paper when we have this chance the problem is it's very difficult for PhD students and early career researchers this is the problem there are many advantages but not easy so it's not easy to um, it's not easy to convert your literature review, I mean the re literature review of your PhD work into a paper or just doing a literature review and publish it as a paper, right? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know I gave you a lot of hope and suddenly, my bad, sorry. Okay. But don't worry there are solutions I have a solution and I want to share this solution with you what's the solution Ding -ding -ding -ding. the solution is systematic review <clears throat> so um, in one of our papers, we mentioned that there are so many different types of literature review papers, right? In one of the papers conducted by, and I forgot who was the author, I think, I forgot. Anyway, it's, I will share the paper later with you. There are around uh, between, uh, I think, 12 to 15, uh, many, so many different literature review methods of reviewing the met, uh, papers, uh, literature, right? So there are many different types of literature review papers, right? So, but generally we can map them like this, something like this, right? Different types of, so all fall between these two extremes. Different types of literature reviews, they fall between these two extremes that you can see here, right? So uh, on the left, you see it's, what you see is narrative, traditional narrative literature review. What is this? This is exactly what you are doing for your PhD work, right? You review the literature review in the way you want to support your model and hypothesis and identify the research gaps, right? This is exactly what you are doing for your PhD work, the literature review for your PhD work. And this is the literature review we use when we write an empirical paper, right? So we have usually chapter two of your usually in the standard format chapter two of your phd work or papers you write is uh, literature review and the way you write the literature is exactly called traditional narrative literature reviews right so why uh, and, and this is the one that i said is very difficult to publish as a literature review paper so if you want to publish um, a literature review traditional narrative literature review method is difficult to publish why how do you review the literature 
for your PhD work or when you want to write an empirical study, how you review the literature. Usually we have a title, of course, not usually you need to have a title. So the topic, right, there are some keywords for that topic. You search for those keywords in Google Scholar or Science Direct or Scopus or whatever database you are using. And then uh, you, based on the search you do, you conduct, you get some papers, right? In Google Scholar, I search for a few terms. I get a long list of papers. Then you start going through them. Yeah, I skim. Maybe you just read the title of the first one. You see, no, this is not really what I want. Then the second one, okay, the title is okay. Then you check the abstract. No, I don't think this is good. Then next one, okay, it seems it's good. And then you maybe open the full text, right? And then when you open the full text of the paper, you don't read word by word. You just go through and see, okay, no, I think this part is good. This part is the one I want to use for my literature review. It can be maybe part of the introduction, maybe the results of the paper, right? So you just select the part that you think is important. Then the next paper, no, this one is not important. This one, let's keep it to see whether I can use it later. You save it in your folder. So this is the way you research and identify the papers for a literature review, right? So this means it's this identifying the papers and selection and including them and extracting the information of the papers all depend on your judgment. All depend on your judgment. So it depends. So it. Uh, so 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 if if two of you work on the same topic and use this use the same topic and you want to write a literature review most probably the literature review you write the two people will write are totally different even the papers you cite most probably they are different right because we have different judgment we have different opinion so it's very subjective it's very subjective right so now what is the problem the problem is an early career researcher or a phd student usually journals, reviewers, editors, they don't trust their judgment, right? Because they're new in the field, right? So uh, usually these type of papers are written by well-known researchers, right? For those, by those who have been publishing in the field in the past 20, 30 years, right? Because we trust them. We believe they know the area very, very well. And even they have developed some part, of in, some part in the area, right? So. So, um, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Uh, so they know, yeah. So we usually <laughs> expect, uh, yeah, we expect those people are right. So they know the field very well. They know the area very well. And we trust their judgment we trust them they you know we um so we expect them to because they expect them to select the best papers to represent the literature right and giving way to these papers right if you are an early career researcher you may choose a big part of one paper small part of another paper and all are based on your judgment and your selection and your uh, understanding of the literature right so these papers are, I mean, if even you write a literature review and send it to a journal, usually difficult when the editor says, okay, this is a young researcher. Actually, I understand that it should be blind review, but in reality, uh, when they read, they, they, they check the name and see, okay, no, this is not, the, especially for literature review papers, for literature review. They say, no, I don't want the paper from, because I don't know this guy. He just started his PhD, how he wants to review the literature, right? how he wants to select, how he wants to identify, how he wants to give way, which weight he has given to each of the papers he has reviewed. Anyway, another problem is the format. You know, usually papers that we write, they have a standard, we have usually, we usually follow the five chapters format, introduction, literature review, methods, results, and discussion. But in uh, traditional narrative literature reviews, if you check the papers, just check some of the literature review papers. Usually they, they don't follow this format. They have their own format. Each paper is different from the others, right? So if you are new in the field and you have not even written 10 papers using the standard format, how I want to um, 
propose a new format, right? So these are the problems. I'm not even comfortable, let's say as a young researcher, I'm not even comfortable with the current standard format. Uh, how I can, how I can uh, propose, how I can write in a new format that I, actually there's no format, there's no format, right? Even there's no format. So I can write a paper in this uh, uh, way. So anyway. So this, these are the problems of traditional narrative literature reviews, right? But on the other hand, you see the, the right side. We have meta-analysis. Meta-analysis. What is meta-analysis? Meta-analysis is the most, uh, is the most positivist way of doing literature review. But again, this one is not very straightforward because you need to use statistical methods to combine the results of past studies. For example, there are 100 papers on the relationship between X and Y. Now we want to combine all these and reach to a conclusion, right? So you need to use statistical methods. And many of people who are in this workshop, they are not really a big fan of statistics. So again, it limits its application. Uh, so what I want to share with you is something between these two extremes and it's called quantitative systematic literature reviews, right? Quantitative literature systematic reviews. Yeah, it's exactly, and you, yeah, <laughs> this is exactly what I want to tell This is a whole, this is uh, the idea of this seminar, a webinar. What is quantitative systematic literature reviews? This means there is a system for doing it. Why I'm saying step by step, why the name of this workshop is there? It's not because I want to teach you step by step, because even systematic review is a step by step thing, right? So there is a system, and this, so what is the role of the researcher? You remember for the traditional one, I said that the research, everything depends on the researcher's judgment, the researcher select, the researcher, the researcher identify, the researcher select, the researcher include, the researcher extract the information based on his or her judgment. But for quantitative systematic literature review, the researcher designs a system based on any uh, guideline, and then the system will make these decisions. So it's, it doesn't depend on the researcher anymore, right? So it's the system that identifies the paper. It's the system. So you cannot just go to a database and say, 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 I want this one. No, I don't like this paper. Okay, this may be related. No, the system has uh, made this decision, makes this decision. So the system would say this, 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 this should be included. This should be excluded. That's all, right? Full stop. So your role will be designing the system. How? There is a guideline for it, right? So um, when you design the system, then the system will do it for you and the researcher will be independent from the research. So when you send this to the journal, the paper you have written to the journal, so in this case, they review, they check the system. They don't know, they don't care who has written this paper. For the traditional narrative research, it's important who has written the paper. Because we want to trust, we want to rely on the judgment of the researcher. But for systematic review papers, we just check the system, the design of the system. And if it's sound, if it's good, then we accept this paper, right? So whoever, anyone can write this paper. So to review, to, to make sure this, that the literature review is good, right? To make sure it's good, the system should be good. And as I said, we check the system, we assess the system, right? And to be able to assess the system, your report should be very transparent. So you need to report everything following a guideline that I will share with you. Transparency is the key in writing a systematic literature review. Because as I said, it doesn't matter who you are. It, the most important thing is, uh, how the system has been designed and to assess the design of the system we need to know all information so we report everything right and these systematic literature review papers are reproducible this means again it doesn't matter who is doing this as long as we are following this system 
you will get the same results. So if 100 people, the assumption is, if 100 people are doing a systematic review following the same system, they should get the same results. Hmm? So sometimes when you submit these systematic review papers to a journal, the reviewer, the, the, it, the system must be part of the paper. You need to explain the system. So they follow the system, and if they don't get the same results, they will question you. So they are reproducible and the assumption is we want to reduce the bias because in the traditional narrative literature review all depends on your judgment so it's biased right but for systematic review we want to eliminate this bias so it depends on the system again how many times i'm repeating this oh my god anyway um so to, how to remove the bias the system will make these decisions. So the researcher is out, right? The researcher is independent from the research. I will show you later with some examples. You will, you will understand what I'm talking about. And so they are explicit, reproducible, and blah, blah, blah. Hazira, you are doing good, Prof. Truly interesting. Thank you very much, Hazira. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, um, I won't spend more time on this. This is the most important slide. This is the most important slide. You need to understand what we are talking about. Now, uh, anything I want to add here? Mm. Mm, let's continue. Yep. Okay, so if you review, if you check the def definitions of systematic review papers in different papers, resources, you will see, usually there are some terms they are, you see they are, have been repeated, right? There are some common terms, like reducing the bias. Why reducing the bias? Later watch the video, you will understand. Increase the reliability. Why increasing the reliability? Because we have reduced the bias, this means we increase the reliability. And, uh, oh, one more thing. The systematic reviews should be comprehensive. So, should be comprehensive. It means, you need to include as many as papers that are related to the topic, right? So the system you design should identify as many as papers that they get. So let's say the assumption is you need to include all papers related to your topic, right? Um, so another term you may find in the definitions is comprehensive. Transparency, we discussed this, right? It should be transparent because they don't judge, they don't assess the researcher, they assess the system. So here, okay, you see comprehensive, fewer biases. Okay. Now, I said system, 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 system. But now you want to ask me how to design, how to design the system. Prisma. Prisma is the way, is the guideline to prepare this system. And I tell you, it's very easy. You just follow step by step and you have a paper. Uh, Prisma means the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis, which, which is known as Prisma. So a group of researchers, they work on this system um, and they developed it. They had several meetings, you know, uh, intense discussions and then they provided this guideline but this guideline consists of covers both systematic review and meta-analysis and for meta-analysis it has it's uh, has some statistical parts so when you go through the prisma original items of prisma some of them are confusing to you and they have been developed for the field of health you know, many of the things in the literature, in, in many of the methodological things we follow, they have been developed in the field of nursing and health. One of them is Prisma. Um, so, some of the terms are you are not familiar with clinical research, so uh, you may find it difficult to follow. So, what we did is we revised, we uh, prepared a checklist based on Prisma, but for systematic review only for systematic review right and suitable for any field of research especially for social sciences 
So these two papers are like by the Bible, right? For systematic review. Not because they are my papers, right? Not because of my because they are my papers. No, of course they are my babies. I need to take care of them. But these are the only resources available to that explain how to use Prisma for only systematic review and in the field of social sciences. So we publish these two, one is paper, another one is a book chapter. You already have received them. We will use this, right? I tell you, this is very important. When you write for top tier journals, when it's a systematic review, they ask you, when you claim it's a systematic review, they ask you, have you followed Prisma? They, you need to clearly mention you have followed Prisma and there's a checklist. Many of the top tier journals, they provide a checklist when you have done a systematic review based on Prisma, you need to tick, you need to select, say, yes, I follow these, these, all items, right? So it's very important. It's not just some of those conceptual things. No, it's a guideline, step by step, you need to follow, and you need to report in your methodology part that you follow this step by step, mention it, right? So I made life, we made life easier by these two papers for researchers. Later I will show you and you will understand why I'm saying you need to, you, these are Bible, these papers, Bible or systematic review. Anyway, now what I want to share with you is interesting. Face display, interesting. Inter, where is it? Ah, slide. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me share something interesting with you. Yeah. I want to show you something, or I want to share something with you. So you see here, this one actually, uh, the picture is not the latest one. This is. Uh, I, uh, this is my last year publications. Yeah, what, I took this picture last year. I prepared some of these slides last year. So anyway, it's not up to date, but it's good for what I want to show you. Uh, you see, this is my pub. You can see my publications in 2019. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I published six systematic review papers in 2019 right six systematic review papers in 2019 and all in good journal top tier journals current issues in tourism is a number one journal is top tier journal in tourism is a very high it's a high impact factor or journal of hospitality and tourism management another one omega it's uh, an uh, a journal, ISSCI journal with impact factor, tourism review. So all have been published in good journals, right? So what I'm sharing this with you, it's not just to show up, it's just to share with you that uh, you have a high chance to publish your systematic review in a top tier journal. What I want to share with you is systematic review can be done by early career researcher and it's a shortcut to top tier journals. It's easier than publishing an empirical study or literature review papers based on my personal experience if you follow my instruction, right? So if you just write a literature review papers, extremely difficult to publish even in an average journal. But if you follow my instruction for a systematic review, you have a high chance to publish it in a top tier journal. You may say you are not an early career researcher, but I show you some evidence. You know, Sara, she's actually this, as I said, I took this picture last year in December 2019. In December 2019, I took these pictures. So you can see Sara now has a postdoc position in Taylor. So she's a colleague. But during that time, she was a PhD student. So as a PhD student in 2019, she published one, two, three, four papers, systematic review in which journals, current issues in tourism, tourism management perspective. Current issues in tourism, journal of hospitality and tourism management, right? So many of colleagues they get professorship with these publications, right? So for early career researcher, and you see she doesn't have much publication. She didn't have much publications in 2019. You see, number of her H index was four, so not really high. And her the highest citations are for her systematic review. So in 2019 she got. 17, 13 is the highest number of citations. So top tier journals, highest citations, early career researchers. Another one, you know, MTS, he was our PhD student. So when he was a PhD student, 
He published two systematic reviews in 2018-2019 in it's a Springer ch book chapter. This, the other one is Nurse Researcher, which is a good journal. And again, the most cited paper is a systematic review. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that if you follow the instruction, you have a high chance to publish your paper in a high impact journal and uh, it's doable even for young researchers. <laughs> Maybe I can use a class. <laughs> Now, how to start? One of you asked me, uh, I still don't know what is Prisma. Yes, I haven't explained Prisma yet. I just said, use Prisma. Now, what is Prisma? Prisma is just a checklist, right? So, where I got this from? This is from the paper we published. The two papers I said they are the most important papers and you need to read them carefully, right? So, Prisma provides a guideline for each part of your paper. So it's easier, you just follow the guideline. Don't be too creative, don't be too innovative. You just follow the instruction. For example, title of the paper, identify the report as a systematic review. This means in the title, you need to write systematic review, right? So gender, gender gap in finance, a systematic review. So you cannot write a literature review, review, critical review. No, you must write systematic review. This is a guideline. So as I said, many top tier journals, they ask you, they provide this checklist and say, uh, check to make sure all have been done. Then you need to follow it and pick in the check box, in the checklist. So the title must have systematic. So you see it's a clear guideline. Then abstract. In the abstract, you need to provide a summary of the objective, then methods, then results. And uh, in the methods part, you need to provide the data sources, study eligibility criteria, and so on, right? Okay, we'll discuss this later. Rational, objectives, and so on, right? Methods. In methods, watch which parts should be addressed in methods. You cannot miss any of them. All must be explained. Results. Funding, discussion, everything, you must follow this. You may say, this is too brief. Uh, this is too brief. Um, can you provide more explanation? Yes. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Gioia, you asked a good question. I will answer this question. If I forgot to ask, answer your question, ask me later. This is extremely important question. Okay, now, you may say, Oh, this is too brief. I don't understand. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I want to share something with you. Be patient. Where is it? My God. <laughs> okay. Um, to share it with you, I need to share my screen again. Hold on. Yep. Um, phase. Okay. So, this is the book chapter. These are the two references that I share with you. I said these are the Bible of. Okay. Um, no, this is one. What is this about? Um, scroll down. You will reach to. Okay, this is not important. Here. This is why this paper is very important. Here in this paper, what we have done, these are the items you need to follow and the statement in Prisma, original Prisma checklist. And then I provided, we provided an example. So this example has been copy paste from a paper already published in a good journal. So you have a real example, how to write the title. You have a good example. I even provided the citation here, right? You should be able to see my screen now, right? Let me see whether, yeah, you see. Then explanation, why we need to include the word systematic review. And you know, you may see some more information here, why? Because in this paper, we checked the paper, systematic review papers published in the field of tourism in Asia and 
checked assessed their quality we checked to what extent they followed Prisma. Prisma was our benchmark. Of course, many of them even didn't know about Prisma, right? Because in social sciences, people have not heard a lot about it, but now it's, uh, it's becoming very popular, right? So we, the benchmark is Prisma because Prisma is the most uh, well-known method, I mean, system and uh, protocol. And we checked whether they, they, how, uh, whether they follow the items or not, how transparent they are. So, and then, Based on the results, we found out that many papers are far from what has been suggested as the best practice in Prisma. So, next one. I will explain this later. Abstract, right? Okay. In the abstract, here is how to write the abstract. And then, an example. You see, it's a big part. It goes to here. You see, all this part is to here, right? So, this is... A real abstract already published I put it as an example in this book chapter I said this is a good example follow this right so you see in the abstract in the design part we have mentioned the database you has used you have used how to say how you search how many papers you got and so blah 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 we will discuss this later and explain why you need to provide this information then next one rational Rational means you need to explain why we need to do a literature systematic review. If already there is a review paper, you need to cite and explain what is the advantage of your review, how your review is adding something to the literature, right? So here I have explained what we mean by rational. A good example I found in the paper, systematic reviews that already have been published in the field of tourism. And then explanation why we need the rational, right? And how to write a rational and then objectives so you see for each part I have provided we have provided wait, I'm saying I we, we, we. we have provided the item you need to address the uh, explanation of the item in the Prisma checklist an example and why you need to follow this right and whether past studies have used this method or not and so on so this is one paper Another paper, this is published in Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Management. In this paper, we reviewed, you see the title is very interesting, maybe to me, not to you. A, oops, a systematic review of systematic reviews in tourism. I like this type of titles, right? We have a paper, the title is I forgot the title. <laughs> Anyway, I forgot. Anyway, a systematic review of systematic reviews in tourism. So again, we reviewed all systematic reviews that have been published and assessed them. So here, what you can see is the items are inserted here. Items are inserted in the slide, right? So is these you must be addressed all of them, right? And the explanation has been provided in the book chapter, right? How to provide them, what to write these sort of things here you can see for example uh, let me show you something here for example title it must have systematic review you see only for seven percent of papers am I right yeah only seven percent of all systematic review papers in the field of tourism they in the title they mention systematic review some of them mention review some of them literature review some critical review and some others right but they must mention system. Another one, rational. How many? No, rational is very popular. Research objectives, of course. Or, um, you see, for some of them, some of them, like this one, 9%, 27%, 10%, 29%, they didn't provide this information. Why we need to provide all this information? Because as I mentioned, it must be very transparent. Otherwise, how we can assess the system so we need to provide all the information provided in the checklist right now um, okay now you may ask how to start what to do first you need a topic and for the topic you need to narrow it down as you know like other studies but you choose a topic and of course you need research objectives right what do you want to review what do you want to know hmm? 
uh, what are your research questions? So when you um, specify these two, then you develop some research terms, search terms, some keywords to search for papers, right? So what are the search terms you, uh, so, so this, <laughs> yeah, so the search terms, something distracted me so the search terms that you want to use to search in databases right or search engines right then you start searching and based on the results you get you will improve your search terms till you reach to a stage that you see okay these search terms are good what are the good search terms they need to you need to make sure the results are comprehensive means you are not missing a big part of the literature so the search terms must identify the papers in your field in the field related to the topic they must they should not miss any paper in the related to the topic so you play with the search terms try error try error till you reach to a good search term then you use them for search then you decide about eligibility criteria what papers to include do you want to review all papers from uh, the beginning till now or you want to limit it to the past 10 years for example if your paper is about something about technology i don't think anyone is interested to know um, papers published 50 years ago right because it's about technology it's growing very fast it's changing very fast so you may limit your search to the past 10 years or language do you want to uh, review only english papers or all papers are interested to include mandarin farsi spanish publication said do you want to include only paper papers published in peer-reviewed journals papers already published or accepted also uh, accepted papers also can be included or do you want to include apps i'm um, sorry conference papers do you want to include uh, newspaper articles do you want to include book chapters you need to decide right and which databases do you want to use do you want to search only through scopus or web, um, web of science or pubmed or google scholar you need to specify or all of them very good all of them means very comprehensive right and do you want to also search manually for some papers that you may have missed by using the search terms and searching using databases and then how you want to screen them do you want to okay because first when you get the results you may get 500 papers when you search for the keywords uh, using the keywords and then the search terms and then you get 500 papers then you check the abstracts the title and the abstracts this is called screening right so how you want to do the screening only you or there is another researcher who will check the same papers too and then you compare the results or no you one person will do all the screening and what are the criteria for screening what is the criteria to include a paper you may say only as you mentioned one of you in the comments you asked me you may say i only include quantitative papers empirical papers i want to exclude conceptual papers I want to exclude conference papers, right? So when you screen many of them, many of those that are qualitative will be excluded. And then next stage, you download the full paper of those that you have not excluded yet, right? Means those you have included and those you are not sure, right? You need to check the full text. Then you download the full text of maybe 100 papers that are left and go through the full text. Again, how you want to, what is the selection criteria? inclusion criteria you would say again i want to exclude conceptual paper i want to exclude qualitative papers up to you right you decide about this and these are the protocol items this is the, your system so you need to decide about these things this is the list of systems so this is the one that people check and see whether your review is good or not right so this is the these are the, you can see the information you need to provide here so I said the design is important, the system, and I'm talking about the design, about the system. So when you finalize all these things, you register it as a protocol. You, in some, some people, some researchers, they go to the research center. We have CRM here in Taylor's. 
They go there and register it, get a code, right? Reference code. And when they register it, why you register? Because we want to be independent from the researcher. Because when you start searching, you may f decide, oh no, that's too many papers. Let's change my search code, right? Why? So to make sure you, the researcher is not influenced by the research, to keep researcher independent from the research, so we reg register it and follow it, right? Follow the system, right? Yeah, later if you found some difficulties and you decided you, to improve, for example, your search uh, or inclusion criteria or whatever, then you have to change your protocol officially, right? So this is the system. And then when you prepare, you decide about all these items, then whoever will do this systematic review should get the same results, right? So when you decide, for example, I will search Scopus using these search terms for year 20 to 2022. 20? What I said? Year, yeah, year, for example, 2000 to 2020, uh, English language paper, only journal articles, and the inclusion criteria is quantitative, blah, blah, blah. So you specify all this, then you sit at your laptop, you search, you start searching using the terms and you uh, follow follow the items um, carefully to complete your review. Um, now, what do you mean by registering the protocol? Okay, means you, as I said, you write all this like a proposal. All these items need to be addressed in your proposal and you register it. Like, you know, how do you apply for ethics? Right? You prepare a proposal and apply. So you can apply, you can get a, uh, you can register it with your research center in any university you are, right? Uh, but it's not very popular in social sciences. In health, medical, nursing, it's very popular. All my studies in nursing, we registered them, right? But for social sciences, it's not very popular to register it. We usually have a protocol and we follow it, right? Um, now, and what is this? You must include this in your paper. Why I'm saying must? Because if you don't do it, they will reject your paper. Very easy. They will reject. In top tier journals, this is one of the things in the checklist. Whether you included this flowchart or not, right? What is this diagram? Um, I'm not sure it's clear or not, but you need to use full screen mode of, uh, full screen your video. But uh, what do you see here? Um, for example, you may set the left side is an example I have used in my paper. The right side is the original one, right? So you see, you search maybe through Google Scholar or Scopus, two search engines. You may get 1,000, 2,000 papers each. You report 1,000 from Scopus, 2,000 from Google Scholar. Then you, re, you, eliminate, you, deduct, you, sorry, you exclude those that are the same. You may get some of the papers you get are the same, duplicates, right? So you remove the duplicates in both the in two databases and you may get in total 1,500 papers. Then you screen the abstracts. Maybe 1,000 will be excluded. When you check the abstract, you see, no, this, does, this paper does not meet the eligibility criteria, the inclusion criteria. So you exclude by checking the abstract. Then full text. Okay, now I have maybe 400 papers that I check the abstract, they may, may be related to my topic. Now I download the full text and now I go through the full text and check whether they are still eligible or not, right? And many of them will not be. Maybe some of them you search for some terms. Those terms maybe are in the text, but they are not related. They randomly were there, but they are not the paper when you go through the full paper. No, this paper is not related to my topic, right? Or this paper is qualitative, or is quantitative when you want to focus on qualitative papers, right? Or whatever, right? So the inclusion criteria, you check. This does not meet the inclusion criteria, so I exclude. Then, how many papers is left? You report it here. For example, in the left side, I found 707 papers by searching the search terms. At the end, I found, I included, I reviewed 67 papers, right? Then you decide, then you decide what you want to extract from these papers. For example, the context, which country so it has been conducted in, uh, objectives, 
um, sample size, method, um, results, these sort of you, I, you decide about them, then for each of these full text that should be included, you go through and extract the information insert in an Excel file, right? So the Excel file consists of uh, maybe 70 rows for the included papers and each column is one of the items you want to extract from the paper. Then you summarize what you found in the papers in the Excel file and report it as a systematic review papers. Now, um, how to report, where is it, hold on. So how to report a systematic review paper? Usually it has an introduction, it is the, the most common method, introduction, sometimes a background, and then methods. In the methods, all these things that we mentioned must be reported, right? For example, see here. Um, so we followed, I'm not sure, let me zoom in. We followed Prisma and for the purpose of, of this study, a comprehensive literature review was undertaken to identify blah, blah, blah. So all papers published until the end of 2017 in tourism and hospitality journals included in the ABDC list. So I limited my search. So we conducted, the, the, in terms of years, it's till the time we conducted the research. But in terms of the journals or databases to include, we search for, we use uh, only papers listed, in, only journals listed in ABDC. But my, my suggestion to improve your paper, go for any paper in Scopus, SSCI, Web of Science. And then I explain why we use ABDC. And uh, a protocol was developed in advance to document the answers. So it means we already decided what are the things we want to include, what are the, what are the items of the Prisma, we finalized it, and we explained, we utilized Scopus, Google Scholar, Emerald, ProQuest, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. So these are the databases we use for search, and what search term I use, because in this paper is a systematic review of systematic review papers, so the search term we use is just review, right? And and uh, uh, yeah, then we explain how we, how we, you see, uh, when we conducted on 1st of July 2017, we performed the search, right? So you need to specify this, when I performed the search and how you did the screening. So two independent reviewers screened the titles and abstracts of the records independently and papers that clearly were not systematic review, such as improved, because we are reviewing systematic review papers. So papers that were not in the scope or conceptual papers were removed, and we checked the eligibility criteria. So you explain all these things, the items that I explained to you all here, right? So an Excel file was used, then we entered the data, keying the data into Excel file, and what you enter into the data file, and so all have been explained here and then in the results you explain we found 192 papers and then uh, oh no okay why the uh, in total we reviewed 192 papers but the search resulted in 2420 papers so when we searched for the keyword we found 2420 papers but 1,848 papers were eliminated as they were not in the scope of the paper and blah, blah, blah. So we explained, we explained this, right? Actually, it's here. We explained this. We started, we found first 2,000 2, plus papers, then some were excluded after screening, after the eligibility criteria, and then 192 papers are left. So, um, these were, this was a summary, where is it? This was a summary of how to, perf how to 
follow the Prisma checklist. So you need to see some samples, right? You need to see some samples. So it's very straightforward. It's very straightforward. You just need to follow the Prisma. Decide about all these items that you can see here. Write them and then think, uh, think about them, develop them. Then when you finalize, don't touch it anymore. Start your search, right? So everything is there. It's like a recipe, right? You just follow it step by step. Now, um, now what I want to share with you. Oh, you guys. Uh, what I want to share with you. I want to show you just quickly how Hold on. How I say, actually there are many different databases, but the way you search is very similar in all of them. But for this workshop, I will focus on Scopus. But later, you will, they are very similar. The way you conduct your search in Scopus or uh, in, sorry, in Web of Science, uh, PubMed, all are very similar. Here is too cold. So, um, do you see my screen? Let me see. No, I have not shared my screen yet. Exercise face display. Okay, guys. So you should see my screen now. Yeah. So this is Scopus, right? This is Scopus search engine. And many universities have access to Scopus, including Taylor's University. I'm not sure whether it's limited or not. I mean, in terms of number of people who at the same time can access to Scopus. But anyway, I'm using it. So you see, when you go to Scopus search engine, there are some uh, tabs here documents authors affiliation advanced I usually personally go to advanced right I go to advanced and here you can write a query to search for now in the slides that I have provided we assume that the title we want to search for is gender gap in finance suppose the pay the topic of our review is gender gap in finance how to search for gender gap in finance papers so here on your right side is the uh, quotes you can use to search for right so there are many different quotes you just open them you see there are so many you see each of them even you open there's a, and when you click you get example explanation but there are some of them very popular right so i start with what I usually do for Scopus is I search for title, you know, even it helps you here. I write title, abstract, and keywords. You see, title, abstract, keywords. Okay. And what I want to search for, gender gap in finance. What is gender gap in finance? Means there is research, research there on, that shows there is a little, there is a area in behavior of finance that say uh, there is difference significant there is differences between men and women in terms of financial literacy financial behavior cheers oh no i am watching spanish tv series now salute is it So, you know, in Farsi, in Iran, we say salam. Salam. So, what terms should I use? Maybe you would say, maybe you would say gender. Of course, when you are talking about gender gap, you expect to have gender uh, in your papers, right? So, what I'm when I'm using this, this term, this quote means search in the title, abstract, and keyword of the papers. If they have gender, then show me the result, include them, right? But it's not only about gender. If I search for gender, I may 
get millions of papers, right? Six hundred sixty thousand papers, right? So, of course, I don't want to include all gender papers. So this is the meaning of the term I said you need to narrow down your research. I want gender, it should be about gender gap and finance. So I expect these two to be uh, in the abstract, to be, to be mentioned in title, abstract and keywords of those papers. So I expect to get less results, right? So in the papers, both terms must be there. So in the title, abstract or keywords, there must be both gender and finance. Then it will be included in the results. So I should get less results, 1840. But is it comprehensive? No, because I'm missing many papers. For example, I'm missing those papers that about financial. Because when you write finance, it will just search for finance with E at the end. But you may say, I want financial behavior, financial literacy, financial whatever attitude as well, right? So how to include this? So I may add here a block representing different finance terms. So you see, and means both of them must be there. So this and is separating gender, there are two blocks. One is gender. The second block is here. You, need, you see open, use parentheses. So the second block is here. So the and is separating this block and gender block. So now both must be there. Now what, what is or? Or means any of them in the paper or both of them are fine. So even if there is finance or financial or both of them, it will be included. Or means any of them if any of them is in the title abstract keywords, the paper will be included. So this query means when you search gender and any of these two must be in the paper or both of them, right? At least one of them must be in the paper. But gender must be there and from this side, at least any one of them should be there, right? So or this is the meaning of or, right? Um, or maybe what else? Investment or investing or I don't know uh, or saving, right? So these are just different term, terms referring to the same thing because I'm also interested in papers that are about gender gap in saving. It's still in the scope of my paper. So if I don't search for saving, Maybe I missed some papers. So your search query should be comprehensive. So I include more terms, synonyms or papers that address different aspects of my topic to have a comprehensive literature review. Now, you see, still I have two blocks separated by and. And limiting the search means it must have gender and it must have at least one of these. Why at least one of these? Because I'm separating them with or. Now, something interesting I want to share with you. Finance or financial. I can replace this with finance and asterisk. What is asterisk? Means any term with F-I-N-A-N-C and anything after that will be included. So when you put asterisk, this asterisk can be replaced with anything. It can be replaced with E, which will be finance, or it can be with IAL, it will be financial. So I put asterisk. It will cover any term that starts with F-I-N-A-N-C. Or for investment or investing, it's the same. So I invest, and then I put asterisk. Invest, investing, investor, investment. In, so all will be included. Let's search again. So I shorten it. Now I can read it easier, right? Let's search. I got 136,000. It's too big. So I need to narrow it down, right? So you need to think how to narrow it down, right? But for the purpose of this study, I'm just giving you an example, right? Of course, there are so many things you need to include. You, you, you need to develop the idea well. So let's keep it as this. Let's keep it as this, right? I want to show you something. 
uh, there are other ways to narrow it down. You can write the queries like what I showed you, the quotes what I showed you just now in the advanced section, or when you get the results here, you may limit it using these terms. Let me just limit it more, edit. Let's do one study, let's say, and I'm, think, I'm adding one more limitation, Malaysia, right? Suppose I want, to I want to just review papers conducted in Malaysia. So you need to write Malaysia or Malaysian, right? So because so the paper as long as has three of these, these three blocks, it will be included. So if gender is not in the paper, it won't be included. If any of these in this block are not in the title abstract keyword, it won't be included. If Malaysia or Malaysian are not in the paper, it won't be included, right? So representative representative from each of these three blocks must be in the paper because I separated with and, right? Now, gender must be in the paper. Any of these, at least one of these must be in the paper. And what about here? I can also Malaysia asterisk. This will be, this will cover both Malaysia and Malaysian. Now, I got less number of papers, 878, right? Now, there are more things you can do. For example, here you may want to limit your paper to the last five, past five. You need a justification. You cannot just say, oh, because I have a kid, so let me just limit my search to the past five years. I don't have time. No, cannot. You need a good justification. Here, author's name. Okay, I don't care. Subject area. You may say, I just want to limit my search to social sciences, let's say or maybe economics and finance, business and management, right? I want to only include articles, journal articles. I don't want conference papers. Why? My justification is because of, because they have been reviewed, so we assume they have higher quality. They are more reliable, right? Or what else? I want only final papers, not those in press, or <clears throat> I want only journal articles, I want only English papers and then limit to. If I press exclude, these will be excluded. Sometimes we want to exclude some things, but now I want to include this. So limit to. So when I limit to, you see, my search query has been revised. Now, you see, the, some things have been added. You see this part? Some parts have been added to my search term. There are more ands and ors. For example, you see, limit to document type AR, means article, only journal article. Subject area, only social sciences or business or econ. And language, only English, right? So this is the same. Now, when you want to write a re review paper, systematic review, copy paste this insert in your paper. This is my advice to you. Then reviewers can use the same can use the same search query to see whether they get the same results because systematic review should be producible. Yep. Now, how to download this? I click here, all, and then here, you see, I click on the arrow here. And what do you want? Okay, I want CSV for Excel file. I want an Excel file and you you, you in, you'd select what do you want to be in the Excel file? What do you want to extract? Here is based on my last search, right? So by default, I don't know, maybe all have been included or excluded. So you can select any of them, but I prefer Excel file. And here I want author's name, of course, document title, yeah, the title of the paper, source title, journal name, I want it, DUI, uh, affiliations I'm interested those that you are interested for example I maybe I'm not interested in corresponding author maybe language I'm not interested because I already limited to English abstract of I want because I want to screen the abstracts later uh, funding maybe I'm not interested or you are interested I don't if you want you can select all of them then export now you see You see, it's downloading, it's downloading an Excel file. Now all have been downloaded, I open it. So this is the results of my search using the search queries that I mentioned. So here you can see author's name. So how many papers do we have? In total we have 
375 papers. So author's title of the paper. I'm not sure you see clearly or not. But anyway, title of the paper, you can see the full title here. Um, year published. You see, we didn't limit the year. So even 1991, there's a paper. Uh, with journals and go to abstract. Here is the abstract. Here is the abstract. So you see the abstract here, right? So this is used for screening. This is very important for screening, right? So what I do usually is I where is the abstract for I missed the abstract. Ah, here. So what I usually do is I create a column here. Screening. Now you go through the abstracts one by one based on the eligibility criteria you have. Read the abstract, see whether you should include. If you want to, usually what, what I do is, if I want to include, I write one. If I want to, if I'm sure this is not in the scope of my review, I write zero. If maybe means I'm not sure, I write two. Then, for example, you read this paper, the abstract. Okay, this, I'm not sure, I write two. This one, oh, this, I'm sure this is included, one. This one, mm, no, no, this is, I'm sure this is not included based on the criteria I have defined, zero. <clears throat> so you code them, you code them, then those that are one or two, you download the full screen to check, to the full text to check the paper, the whole paper, and then you add one more column, LEG, maybe full text. Then those, you got two or one. Maybe you check the full text of this page, you download the full text PDF. Then you see, oh no, this, is, this should be included, yes. This one, of course, yeah, you check again and you see, uh, yes, yes, I was right. But those that you already excluded, you don't check anymore, right? This one, it's one, maybe next one, no. This one, yeah, I thought it should be included, but no, it's not included, it's not related. When you see the full text, no, it's not related. Then based on this information, you complete your work and you prepare this table. For example, how many papers you got? We got um, the search resulted in 375. 375. How many you excluded because of the apps, checking the abstract, checking the full text, and how many you got? Maybe 50 I got at the end. Then what items you want to extract from each? You need to decide about it. Maybe I want to ex extract the uh, uh, objectives, maybe methods, maybe results, maybe sample size, whatever, Up, depends on the objective of your review. What do you want to review? Then those papers that you must include at the end, you extract the information right here, copy paste here in the cell. So you get the information for the first paper, second paper, and so on, those that you need to include. And then you summarize all this information and you write in the results section. So this is how you review a paper. Just very quickly, let me, before we go to the Zoom session, just quickly, I want to show you this part. Let me go back here. Okay. Um, Yeah, someone asked me, is it based on abstract? First, you check the abstract, but later you need to check the full text as well because sometimes the abstract doesn't show everything, right? So the first stage is always the abstract screening. Then you check the full text of those abstract that you think may be included, right? Should be included. Now, I want to share something. I checked yesterday using Scopus search engine. I searched for wine and I searched for cheese. So for wine, I found 56,000 records. When I searched for cheese, I found 33,000 records, right? This is exactly what I, you can search. If you don't trust me, try yourself later. <laughs> so next, how to use the Boolean operators, AND and OR. These are the key things, right? So what is AND? AND, as I mentioned, mentioned means in the abstract title or the full body, whatever. When you use and, 
both terms both blocks must be in the paper so when i write wine and cheese you see 56000 papers mentioned wine 33000 papers mentioned cheese when i search for wine and cheese only the gray the highlighted area the shadow area will be included means papers that included both wine and cheese so number reduced to 584 i'm not sure you see here in your slides here you see i captured the screen of scopus its title abstract keyword wine and cheese means both so it limits your search it narrows down your search like the malaysia that i added at the end of the search only papers that have gender finance and malaysia <laughs> then what about or or makes it more comprehensive means as long as in the paper is mentioned wine or cheese even one of them it's fine it's included so you see number of papers 89,000 almost 89,000 so it's 56,000 and 33,000 minus the duplicates so all will be included what about not cheese means all that sometimes you want to exclude for example your study is about gender gap in finance but some studies are not in your scope for example some papers they are about corporate governance and they have the word gender finance but it's about the characteristics of a company but it's, my topic is about personal finance so i want to remove papers that have uh, let's say inja, let's say here oh my god inja means here in farsi inja means here in farsi yeah you need to learn farsi uh, <clears throat> because sometimes i may speak farsi <laughs> so uh, wine not cheese means all papers that mention wine but exclude any paper that has cheese in the paper so you see the part this part has been excluded so these papers do not have any cheese they are all pure wine so 55,800 so you see 55,800 here wine is 56,400 so it's a bit less means some of the wine papers they mentioned about cheese too but here we excluded them right we excluded them and now we got 55,800 so you need to be very comfortable with and or and not to write a very beautiful search query right okay um yeah we are done for the lecture part for the first part um, now we in we have six minutes so we may have a break then in at 12 we will join the zoom session guys those who yeah the search techniques yeah okay yeah good that they are useful yes yes they are very useful i prepared them last night yesterday um so guys um, i need to take the attendance for those who um, um, attend because who, those who register through hrss so i will do it um in the zoom session i will share a link just write your name and done um sorry okay um okay guys so um hope you enjoyed the session hope it was helpful useful um so i will see you at 12 at noon in the zoom session you know where you find it you can find the link to the zoom session take care and take care. <laughs> okay i will see you soon i will see you at 12. bye guys see you soon Bye bye. So I end this stream. I will see you in the Zoom session.